Yes, welcome to the Information Hub. I know most of you medical doctors have been reaching out to me asking me about how you can work in the USA as a foreign educated doctor or IMG, okay? And today on this channel, I have the chance to sit down with a foreign educated doctor who comes from Ghana and he is here in a residency program and he just did his application. He went through all the steps and he's going to tell us all about it. Anyway, my name is Priscilla Kuma. I'm a registered nurse, come from Ghana, schooled in Ghana, live in New York State where I work as a registered nurse. I am a nursing migration content creator. Shout out to all my friends, all my medical doctor friends, Dr. Ohini, Dr. Nyamwame, Dr. Rashid, Dr. Nyako number one, Dr. Nyako number two, and Dr. Tete and all the medical friends in my life, Dr. Tenge, I can keep shout out to all of you and the good work you're doing out there and share this video with others who are interested in working in USA as a medical doctor. It is not easy. It is not for the faint-hearted. It's very expensive, very lengthy. But if you are determined and this is your goal and this is what you want to do, you want to live the American dream like most of us are living it, don't give up. Watch this, take a little tidbit and apply them and give it time. This journey is expensive and lengthy and you want to give it time. Okay, so before then, I double as a lead consultant for US RM Pathway Consult. If you're a general nurse, midwife, mental health nurse who wants to work in USA and don't know how to go about it, leave all that headache, all that paperwork to me and I would handle that for you. I managed to do that for myself. It took two years, but we came out successful and many are on this journey. Don't give up on that nursing dream. Find my consult at www.usrmpathwayconsult.com and send me a message, send me an email, enroll, and you will not regret it. Okay, enough of that. If my videos have helped you in any way at all, please, please, please click on the thanks sign to say thank you. It ranges between $1.99 to $49.99. And let me apologize for this video because I've been having some technical issues these days. There's a lot of echoing and lighting issues. I'm so, so sorry we're doing this at midnight. So I foresee that happening. Pardon me if the echoes happen and also if the lighting issue disturbs you. Please, I'm sorry. I hope the message is clear. And if you don't hear anything well, click on the title. It opens up a transcript. Click on the transcript and then you see every word as we say them by the seconds and minutes we say them. You can read from there as well. Thank you to the over 10,400 of you that have subscribed and counting. I'm sure by the time this video is out, it will be more than that. I cannot believe it. I'm doing this gradually, gradually, gradually. And it has become a thing that has impacted people's lives. If you haven't joined my Telegram group yet, what are you waiting for? The opportunities that are being shared there daily and people are getting jobs that is going to change their lives. The USA project is a very lengthy one. So find my Telegram group in the description box and i'll pin it in the comment section as well join that group and get the chance to be able to change your life and find opportunities as well i'm so excited because finally i'm able to bring someone to you who would elaborate on the method and the process of how to work in usa and so many medical doctors have reached out to me especially from africa nigeria ghana Cameroon always asking how they can work in USA even though they did not study medicine in America and I'm so lucky and fortunate to find a fellow Ghanaian who schooled in Ghana and he's now in America. I can't wait to hear all about the steps. It's lengthy, expensive, it's not for the faint-hearted but it's doable and somebody has done it so let's get right into it. Thank you very much Dr. Boapo. You are welcome to my channel. Please introduce yourself to my guest. Thank you, Miss Priscilla. I'm Amon Fubwampum. I'm Ghanaian. I'm currently in my first year of residency at Howard University Hospital as an internal medicine resident. I originally schooled in Ghana. I had my medical education in Ghana, Kenya City to be precise. And as you said, I'm, I'm just here to continue my medical journey. Impressive. So Howard University, that is where Kamala Harris, the Vice President of America, went to. And I happen to be uh, at Inketo on the campus. It's a beautiful place. Okay, so please tell me, you did a, a six-year medical school program? 
Yeah, I did. So back home in Ghana, right after senior high school, you if you want to read medicine, you enter from first year. And then it's a, it's a six year program. When you are done, you are awarded the MBCHB set, but it's still subject to a two year long mandatory house job or house housemanship, as we call it. After which you will be deemed fit to practice quote unquote on your own. So during the first two years, you are a houseman and you practice under supervision. Mm -hmm. You are a fully qualified doctor, but you still have to practice under supervision. No, oh, okay. and that is for two years. Yeah, that is for two years. So after the two years housemanship, what next? Okay, so then you just choose where where you want to go or what you really want to do. So regarding the USMLE journey, once you complete school, you can you can actually get it kick started. So it doesn't really require that you complete the first six years and then do the two year mandatory house job. No, you can still do it whilst you are in school, but per my ex experience, it is better to get done with, with school because we are in two different settings. Um, we do practice tropical medicine. So there are a few differences between our curriculum and then this. And um, I think you you get to grasp certain things when when you are done with school. Okay. You are done with school. So it's really it to say that a medical school graduate, mm -hmm. somebody who did the studies, can start a USMLE journey not without necessarily doing the housemanship or becoming a doctor. Yeah, exactly. A, so a you medical can, yeah. graduate. So you can start as early as second year, third year. The fact of the matter is American graduates here, they start writing the exam in their second year. So you don't need to be a licensed medical doctor to be able to, in, to be put to the USMLE journey here? Not at all. So there are a few pathways. If my memory serves me right there, there are six pathways. I, I use pathway one and pathway one comprises those of us who were already originally practicing back home. There are a few others, five of them. Mm -hmm. What made you study medicine in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> you really want to know? Yeah. Uh, growing up, oh, honestly, I never wanted to read medicine. Mm -hmm. I am math and physics biased right from um, senior, senior high school. But you know, sometimes sit the economic situation and all that they do demand that you kind of tailor your interest along the trend so i'm the last one of five so i have to take advice from my siblings they they have been coaching me right from scratch though i had interest to reach in, in engineering but when i had the grades they were like right now is the is the most lucrative is the easiest way of landing a job back home in Ghana. And I must say I've never regretted reading medicine. I've never regretted being part of the fraternity. It's it's always been a joy. It's always been very joyous and satisfactory, I should say. Whenever I go to work, though it's tiring, demanding and stressful, but hey, to get the opportunity to attend to the medical needs of someone as a lot of one and it's very enviable. So wow. I feel at home working as a medical doctor. Nice. By the way, which secondary school do you go to? Shout out to your people. Oh. <laughs> so I'm I'm a product of Kumasi Anglican Senior High School. So tell me about pathway one, the one you used and the one you are best familiar with, how to start the USMLE journey. Okay, so first of all, you need to, the exam is in three steps. So there is step one, step two, and step three. Thanks to COVID, step two used to be in, in two parts, what, what we used to call clinical knowledge and clinical skills. But thanks to COVID, clinical skills have been scrapped. So step one basically comprises of basic knowledge. 
And so you will be tested on basic knowledge, burden on courses that we did, that we Ghanaians or those who are locally trained back in Ghana, such courses are done from first year to third year, a good number of them. So it will bother on anatomy, physiology, microbiology, um, general pathology, chemical pathology, immunology, basically the basics. When you are done with that, then you can write the step two clinical skills. Both of these exams can be written back home in Ghana, in Accra. When you are done and you pass, then because step two um, clinical skills has been scrapped, now there is another step, there's another exam called the English Pro Proficiency Test. So you need to sit for that one. And then should you pass, then you can apply for what we call ECFMG certification. So ECFMG basically stands for um, the Educational Commission for Foreign Medical Graduates. They are like, they are in charge of recruiting foreign medical graduates mm -hmm. on board here. Mm -hmm. So you submit credentials to them and then you can get certified. Once you are certified by ECFMG, you are eligible to apply for any residency position here in the United States of America. Okay. So for one to class step one, do you have to like take a class or study on your own? And where do you go to register to say, I want to take these exams? Okay, so yeah, that is a good question. That is why I would like most of the people I talk to and then your, your audience, obviously, to either finish medical school or at least get to fourth or fifth year. By then you would have had um, a very good grasp of the principles and all that. Um, I did self-tuition because obviously I had completed medical school. I had almost finished with house job when I, when I started preparing. But you know, the stress of house job, the, the stress of practicing back home, mm -hmm. because of that, my preparation was not that, I wasn't con consistent. It was very erratic. You start, you break off and all that. But eventually, I had to speed up, do the best I could. So um, usually, there are videos available, there are materials, there are other books, books, software, and soft copy and hard copy that you can lay hold of. The most popular is the first aid. So there is a US, USMLE first aid, step one, and there is step two book. For those writing step one, I would recommend you get that. That is the Bible, that is the holy book of the exam. You need that, but it's not so much elaborating. So you need to watch watch some videos. I'll rec I'll recommend Boss and Beyond such videos. They are around. They are around. You can you can reach out to friends or you can download them online. Um, and then a couple of question banks as well. New World is the number one. Is that is the top one of the top selling New World or question banks? You get hold of that. And the number one um, asset will be attitude, discipline. So you need to discipline yourself, make time and study amidst all the responsibilities, amidst the, the stress of practicing medicine back home. Once you've been able to pass medical exam back home, hey, if you apply yourself, you are going to make it. You are going to pass. And do well, exactly, and do well. Wow. So I'm talking about step one and two and how you can write that in your home country. So what is mm -hmm. that about? So um, I am currently preparing for step three. So step three, step three also borders on clinical knowledge and application and more of, um, yeah, it does bother on clinical knowledge, application, and management. So it's a step higher than one and two. But before you complete medical residency here, you, you should have sat and passed 
this exam, which is the step three. Okay. So step three cannot be written or done in outside the US. It has to yeah, be. Yeah. So yeah, that is the only difference. You cannot write step three back home. It needs to be done here. In your introduction, you mentioned you are doing your residency program. So how come you have not you are not completed step three and you are in the residency program? I thought oh, it's a step yeah, okay, so, <laughs> yeah, that's that might be quite com confusing. I, I understand. You don't necessarily need to write and pass all three steps before you start residency. Okay. There are a good number of my colleagues who are yet to write um step three, but you should write and pass step three, ideally before you, you complete first year. Some other programs do give some room. So like within 18 months of starting residency, you should have written and passed step three. Okay, so how much does it cost step one? How much do you pay for the USMLE step one? Wow, <laughs> that, is a, that is a million dollar question. I know. I started preparing for for the steps um, late 2019, so I cannot recall how much I've really pumped into this journey. But hey, it's very involving. Yeah, it's very involving financially. Roughly, you need let me say seven thousand to eight thousand bucks. That, and, and that is as exclusive of relocation costs. I mean, plane flight and rent and all that. No, just, just the exam. Because you are going to write three separate exams. Okay. I don't know how much each of them cost right now. But if I'm if my memory serves me right, step two alone, reg registering for the exam is in is in excess of a thousand bucks. Okay. You need to buy the question banks as well, around 500 USD also. You need to buy the first aid book. You need to, yeah. And one aspect that would actually consume any applicant's money is when you are actually applying to the schools or to the programs. Okay. You are likely to spend no less than $3,000 on the programs alone. That is, if you really want to go all out, cast your net wide, and then match successfully. So, okay. after step one and two, and then mm -hmm. you applied for a visa and came to the USA. But this was after you had matched. So, can you ask yeah. me how to get into residency program? Because I know people personal who are struggling to get into a residency program in the USA. Okay, so for now, you should have passed step one and step two and then the english proficiency exam they they do take the occupational english tests so you should have passed all three and then you should be ecfmg certified I, ielts is not allowed OET only. Yeah. yeah OET only so when you are done with these three then you apply for ecfmg certification which is now i i paid a little over nine hundred dollars last year, but I think to this cycle they are paying close close to a thousand or a little over a thousand bucks. So all these do count. Um, having done that, then you would apply to IMG friendly medical residency programs. So not all the programs are IMG friendly, and when I say IMG i.e. international medical graduate right. mm -hmm. anyone who did not complete medical training here in the us of a and this consists of americans who did not get the opportunity to school here mm -hmm. and non-americans like those from back home ghana nigeria and whatnot so you apply to these programs they look at your credentials your scores it's not only limited to scores they need a versatile um, candidate. So to boost or increase your chances of matching, obviously you need to get good scores. Mm -hmm. I will always put scores first, but aside that you need to 
um, you need to have veered into other research or any other scholarly activities. QI projects, research, if it's possible, if you are able to get a US clinical experience, that is a plus. If you're a green card holder, that is also a plus. But I apply just as, I just apply because I'm not a green card holder and I never had a US clinical ex experience. Thankfully, or fortunately, I should say, the weight on US clinical ex experience is a bit low now, mm -hmm. given COVID. Because, uh, because of the emergence of COVID and its associated travel bans and all that, they have not been placing so much weight on US clinical ex experience because within the past few years, there, there's been some restrictions to travel in and out of every country. Yeah. So in, in um, order of significance or um, importance, of course, so you need to discipline yourself, do well, make sure you are able to ace the exam. With that, having said that, you would need some scholarly act activities, a research or a publication of or one or two. They don't necessarily have to be done in the US of A. It can be done back home. It just have to, it just have to be a research, a, a research or publication, either either of the two or QI projects, um, and then if possible, a US clinical experience. Wow. So then you start finding hospitals where you can do your residency. Yeah, exactly. And uh, when I spoke to you, you said you applied to 170 something. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I did that because I was even financially con constrained because you know, owing to inflation, yeah, our, our currency back home, the city, the city is struggling. It's been struggling since, still so trying to catch up. So I had planned applying to 150 but I only could afford for 170. And this, this is usually the trend for most IMGs because quote unquote, we are not as much as marketable as our fellow American graduates. We didn't train yet. We need to do more to prove ourselves and get, get into the next. So you need to cast your net wide. So you need to increase your chances of matching. By so doing, one has to apply to a good number of programs. If you are to um, look it up online, many people would say a minimum of 100 is the safe, safest net for any IMG applicants. So I did 170 because of financial con constraints. If I had the money, I would have done 150. So when so, you the hospitals, you have to pay. Guys, pardon my sound. I don't know what's going on, but you said it's cost intensive as in the application cost you money or what yeah it does it does so for each program that you apply you do pay for the first 10 as and when i was applying mm -hmm. for the first 10 programs you pay 99 bucks mm -hmm. for the second 10 for the second 10 you pay 17 dollars per each application so that's 170 right wow. For the third 10, you pay $21 per program. For the fourth, any, any extra program, you pay 26 bucks per program. So it's capital intensive. So how many of those 170 got back to you? Less than 10, honestly, less than 10. When, when we had our, our background, um, Chats. I told you the, the exact figure. Yeah, it's less than 10. And that is the reason why you need to apply white. Because you you might be a good candidate overall, but hey, they, they know a little about you. They don't, they don't know much about you. So most programs, I just filter you out. Yeah. Hmm. So finally, you got the responses from less than 10. Uh, hospitals and how did you narrow down or make a decision that I'm going to Howard? Okay, so when you get into 
when you get invites for interviews, you will then attend interviews in all programs. And then afterwards, you do what we call ranking. You you create your rank order list. So let's say you got Howard, you got other programs in New York, wherever. Based on your your experience during the interview, you will then rank them in order of preference from one to your last. And the program two would rank all the candidates that they interviewed in order of preference. So on March day, which is usually either on March 14, during my time it was on March 14, but I think this this cycle, this cycle March day would happen on the 13th of March. It's it's usually a Monday. So on on, on that faithful Monday the, the algorithm is run. I don't know who is who is in charge of the algorithm. So depending on where you were run in each of the programs, you get to match or not. Should you match, you would receive an email congrats, that says, congrats, you've, you've successfully matched, and that's it. And then four days later, they will then email you with the actual program into which you matched. So it's quite a complex process. And then after March day, there is what we call soup. It's more of um, a supplemental um, match process, I guess. So usually not all programs get candidates or applicants. Not all programs get their positions, their available positions filled to the max. So after the first round of match proper, there are a few gaps in certain programs which you can also apply. And then if favor should or luck should find you, then you can match with that. But I didn't match in the first cycle. You did match or you didn't match? I did. I did match in, in the first cycle. So So is it done once a year every March? Yeah. So if you miss that, you have to wait till the next year March. Good, exactly. So you uh, you were in internal med medicine, right? Yeah. As somebody who is specialized, uh, mm -hmm. and especially does he have an upper hand because he's specialized in the same field? Actually, that that might be okay. So it has its pros and cons. It might be a disadvantage, but to other programs that might be an upper hand. It might it might give the person an upper hand in that certain programs do cap the year of graduation the average so the average year of graduation for most programs is five so there are most programs who would filter out all candidates if the year of graduation is more than five and so if you are ready as a specialist depending on the programs you do apply to hey you can either match or not wow. there, are, there are so many filters year of graduation is one U.S. obviously U.S. Uh, green card status, immigration status, they are all part of that. Scores, um, yeah, there are a few number of them. Okay, so because you were in, in internal medicine field, mm -hmm. can you apply strictly to that field, or can you open up your nest and apply to other fields? Or oh, what? How does it work? Oh, oh yeah, you can. So. Back home, I wasn't in residency and I wasn't um, a specialist, okay? I was a medical officer, so, medical officer. so like a general practitioner. I just wanted to do internal medicine. Mm. That's why I applied to internal medicine. There are other colleagues of mine who did apply to OBGYN, surgery. It depends on your, on your, on your interest. You ask me if um, all the 117 ap applications were to internal medicine programs, right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. So I was saying I wanted to play it safe because for each discipline or program that you do apply to, you need a minimum of three recommendation letters from physicians or doctors within such disciplines. So if you are to apply to three different programs, it means you need a different you need different recommendation letters from such disciplines. You need 
three different personal statements and all that. But I just wanted to play safe, nothing complex. The pathway is already a stressful one. So line of least resistance just to make my way easier and less stressful. Okay. So you started this process from 2019. Yeah, late 2019. Between USMLE step one to step two, how long did it take you? Okay, so I wrote, yeah, I wrote step one in June 2020. And I wrote step two, June or July 2021. Yeah. And I, and I applied for March in September 2021. March, I matched in March and then got here in June. And I wrote the English proficiency exam, I think a month later because, hey, though back home in Ghana, English is not our prof, um, official language, but we've been taught the English language right from scratch. So it wasn't a big deal at all. And of all the steps in this exam, of all the processes, the English proficiency exam is the easiest. If you are able to ace step one, step two, hey, come on, you are just gonna, it's going to be um, a walk in the park. It's not going to be difficult at all passing the occupational English test exam. So I did that. I, I think I used less than two weeks to prepare for that exam. And then I, apply to the schools and then for the march in in september 2021 i marched in march started the onboarding processing and i got here in june this year so the residency is for two years yes. here no it's three it depends internal medicine is three OBGYN is four some of the surgical disciplines are five yes in total duration Wow. So it depends. Wait, I think neurosurgery should be seven. Of course. Yeah, neurosurgery should be seven. Wow. Oh, Guys, I apologize for my sound. It's echoing. I don't know. It's late. We're doing this very late too. So please, I apologize for the sound. The transcript will show you all the words we are saying in the description box. Just click on it and watch all the words or read them. I'm sorry. But yeah, so... You arrive in the hospital, what is the first step? What do you have to do? And also, can somebody go through all these steps and get denied a visa? Um, to the best of my knowledge, this has never happened because okay. when you when you march to into any program, you are offered an offer letter. Um, it's usually either a J1 visa, that's an exchange visa or H1B. And to be frank, I think to some extent, a huge proportion of the total population of the USA do depend on IMGs or international medical graduate. If you should visit mm -hmm. most of the hospitals, you would see not all the practicing physicians actually trained here. So it is a win-win for both parties. So hardly i have fine i'm new in the game but hardly have i had anyone who has been denied a visa maybe if the person had a criminal record or might have falsified certain documents but once you match you are 99 to 100 percent sure that you get your visa okay so you got a j1 visa and it was a yeah. so it's it's for three years but you would get only for a year renewable year for the entire duration so if your program is five years it means it's going to be five years but it will be renewable every year okay so since you're here in the residency program uh, mm -hmm. it's a paid residency right you are paid oh, yeah. every month yeah i don't want to call it salary but it's it's manageable you'll be you'll be comfortable on it Okay, I have a friend who is a medical doctor, and that's all he wants to know. Can residency salary sustain me? <laughs> and oh, yeah, in Ghana? it's sustainable. Can you give a range? Oh, yeah, so it depends, it depends on, on the program. Okay, it depends on the program, it depends on which year in residency you are as well. 
Um, the minimum you you be taking should be let's say fifty to fifty yeah fifty five k a year. Others others will be higher. Okay. The the highest I've seen should be eighty k. What mistakes have been made on the way, and what advice do you have for foreign educated doctors who want to work in USA? Any tips you want to leave with them? One of the mistakes that I regret committing was that I did not research thoroughly through the programs when I was applying. So I ended up applying to certain programs that with the, with the knowledge and ex experience that I have here, I, I wouldn't have applied back then. So there are certain programs that are quote unquote I, IMG unfriendly. When you apply to them, there is a 90 to 100 percent chance you'll be filtered out. You will not be called for an interview. A good number of them. So if anyone is at such step in this journey, I would recommend they do thorough research. They should get in touch with anyone they can in any of the programs that they would want to apply. Because there are there are certain programs that you don't have to apply to because they are not IMG friendly. No hard feelings, but that is the that is the case or that is the pattern. So make sure you apply to only programs that are renowned to be um, IMG friendly programs. We just yeah. have to find another time and bring you back. Uh, I know you are so busy, but the sound is so terrible. Thank you so much for making time for this. Uh, your name is on the screen. I know people are going to find you on social media. They're going to bombard you with questions. People have a lot of questions. They'll leave the questions in the in the comment section. I'll, and with time, when you have time out of your busy schedule, you can come and address some of the questions that will be beyond me. As they know, I'm a registered nurse. My channel is mainly about nursing. I also went through a similar process because I schooled in Ghana before I came over and did the whole enclosed licensure process to be able to work. It took me two years and it's also capital intensive and you have to put in a lot of work. So thank you very much, Dr. Pompon, for your time. I wish you all the best. I will come back and check on you and see how your residency program is going. We are proud of you. Ghana is proud of you. It's a pleasure. Thank you to all the help you've given to your friends so far. I know you've helped people back door and I'm sure they will appreciate it too. All right. It's a pleasure. Bye. Bye. -bye.